Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start the meeting in about one minute. If you could take your seats, please. Thank you very much. All right, good morning. We're going to go ahead and call this to order. This is the Gary Sansing Public Forum. Please turn your cell phone to the vibrate, silence, or offsetting. The Gary Sansing Public Forum is intended for matters not included on the agenda for the upcoming Board of County Commissioners meeting. Citizens wishing to address items on the agenda should sign up to speak to such items at the regular Board of County Commissioners meetings. Speakers shall refrain from abusive or profane remarks, disruptive outbursts, protests, or other behavior which interferes with the orderly conduct of the Gary Sansing Public Forum. Each, limited, each speaker is limited to three minutes unless otherwise determined by the chairman to allow sufficient time for all speakers. At the chairman's discretion, the Gary Sansing Public Forum may end five minutes prior to the scheduled start of the upcoming Board of County Commissioners meeting to allow the meeting to commence on time. We have 12 speakers, so today it will be two minutes per speaker. Two minutes per speaker because I anticipate more coming as well. Um, first up, Jerry Price. You're recognized. Followed by Shirley Piritz. You're recognized. Thank you. Appreciate you guys letting me come up for you. Um, this is a picture, uh, this is going to go to Mr. Underhill, but sure he's got some things she's passing out to you. Uh, these pics are District 2. I live about one half to two miles from, uh, from these pics. The homeless need a place they can go without trespassing and, and staying dry. They sleep in front of businesses and on sidewalks, in front of homes and on bus benches, grassy areas, by exit ramps. All of these people can work. And many are on drugs, meth, cold ice, boy, uh, it's a mixture of heroin and fentanyl mix, marijuana, alcohol. Putting the no panhandling ordinance in action for intersections and right of ways would help drivers and property owners. If the commissioners could use the money to hire security to travel around town, it would help business owners at malls. The police will not touch homeless until the commissioners give them a law that they can use. Other counties have no panhandling ordinances. People honk and give a thumbs up to my no panhandling sign. Three people boo it. Others just drive on with no expression. A few really hate the commissioners that sit in the chairs at the forum meetings. Homeless can work, but refuse because they make, en they make enough at intersections. Some get social security and disability checks, but it only lasts for about two weeks, and then they're back out on the road. $50 a day panhandling, panhandling is normal. Rents are high, going from $700 a month before COVID to $1,100 a month after COVID. The recession is coming, especially with the Fed hike and food costs at 8.5% increase since last year. Unemployment is given, leading to more on the streets. Thank you very much, Mr. Price. That's your time. Thank oh. you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Shirley, you're recognized, followed by Darren Flanders. You're on deck. Darren Flanders. Thank you. Good morning. Hi, my name is Shirley Piritz, and I live at 1385 Fenley Drive. I am here to speak in opposition to the proposed Outpost Bayou Rental Complex. I would like to address inadequate parking and fencing. Thanks to county staff for requesting elevation plans. As they are passing out to you, the floor plans show several units with four bedrooms, each measuring just over nine feet. What type of tenant would want four small bedrooms? With the proximity of the proposed development to UWF, these units would be perfectly marketed to college students. Four college students sharing an apartment have at least two things in common. Their class schedules are not the same and their work schedules are not the same. That means all four students have vehicles. One can park in the garage and one in the driveway. Where are the other two vehicles for each of these units going to park? The obvious answer is in the street. Even though street parking is supposedly prohibited, how will that be enforced? 
We have no indication there is even going to be a leasing office on site. Who will manage the parking and the probable wild parties college students tend to hold? Yes, loud music playing at 2 a.m. next to single family residences. I am asking you commissioners to direct staff to obtain more information from the developer regarding specifics on where these extra two vehicles per unit will park, if there will be a leasing office on site, and if not, how they intend to manage their tenant's behavior. Also, as you can see on page two, there is no fence between the amenity areas and Finley Drive. Please direct staff to require an eight-foot privacy fence on Finley Drive so that the partying students won't wander in and around our quiet neighborhood late into the night. Thank you. Thank you very much. Darren Flanders. Darren Flanders. Followed by... Catherine Griffin. Catherine Griffin, you're on deck. Good morning, sir. You're recognized. Good morning. I have a question. Um, is it okay to live at the library? You mean, do you mean a that? A public library on 220 at Spring Street. Is it okay to live at the public library? I, I don't think Mr. so. Mr. May, anybody? I, I don't think so, no. You can't okay. live there, but you can go there and spend a lot of time. So there. what we have now is we have people that live at the library. They go in there, they sleep there, they eat there, they stay there all night long, and they, they leave to go get their alcohol or drugs, and they come back. This has been going on. This is the third time I've been here. Um, and the problem's not being addressed properly, in my, in my opinion. PPD is supposed to be removing them. It's not happening. But what's happening is the homeless know that they can get away with it. They go in. They're, they're there all day long. They bring food there. I go in there sometimes and there's apple pie that it's not the normal people that go in there to use the library It's the homeless that are taking advantage of the library uh, You can't leave stuff outside of this building Dynamic security needs to be changed at the library. I'm pleading with you guys at least the security guard uh, Personal property is left. Uh, there's a guy named Nathaniel stuff that's been there for two or three days It's still there outside the library. That is a safety hazard um, People continue to take advantage of it. I'm pleading with you guys to do something about it because it's really your responsibility. It is county used facility and it's not, it's, it's not being done properly. Um, I just don't understand how, how it continues. You know, I couldn't sleep out here and live here, come in here and then when I leave, sleep out there. How are they allowing it at the library? The security guard here, if it's out here, they remove it. So why is it not being done at the library? I would really like some, some of these questions answered uh, because the administrator is not doing his job in getting rid of this stuff over there. Thank you, Darren. Next up, Catherine Griffin, followed by, followed by Carolyn Tramble. Good morning, ma'am. You recognized? Good morning. My name is Catherine Griffin. I live at 1210 Deuce Drive. I'm here to confront uh, um, Stephen, Barry Stephen, okay, about building a road on our, on Quintet Road that is considered our property. And we do not want you to build that unless you put up money. Like Mr. Burke, y'all built all that sidewalk down there over the water and pay him. We would like to be compensated too because it's not going to go on, on that road, be built, unless you compensate us from 20, Highway 29 all the way to Quintet. That was, that is property. That, that was, a, I'm sorry, that was a plantation. I worked on that plantation at the age of seven years old. You said that Mr. David, that Mr. David couldn't get out of his walkway, his driveway, till he come through that plantation. Y'all closed that plantation, they really started building it, and that plantation was sold. Guess what, Mr. David didn't even have a way to get back home. Because the people that got the houses built that, they closed them out of there. But you said it couldn't be done. Yes, it can be done. Unless y'all put up some money for that sidewalk, it won't be built. That's, we, you, uh, we don't mind about you doing the sidewalk, but you're going to have to pay for it. And we're tired of y'all taking our property. Because the property is considered our, it's, we, I, we scoped it out. So unless you do it, you can't do it. You can't. You cannot be a layer. Thank you and have a blessing. Thank you. Carolyn Tramble, followed by Pam Weirick. Good morning. 
My name is Carolyn Trimble. I know I'm here to speak about Days O'Clock on her behalf. That's my mother. I'm tired of y'all. Uh, the roadway that runs to Molina off of Quintet, that's, the road is on my mama's property. My mama pay property tax every year. And y'all got road bill that y'all say it couldn't be cold just as year. Y'all didn't even pay my mama for the past 50, 60 years she been on that property, 80 years she been on that property. Y'all haven't given her a dime. And car running up and down the head, so many rates there. But y'all still ain't get my mama her money for that property, because it is her property. It's on the map. Everything is on the map. I got it here. But that's what I want done. I want my mama to be compensated for her property, for that road to be on that. If you can't pay her, shit it down. But I want her to be compensated. Y'all have a good day. Thank you very much. Pam Weirich, you're up next, followed by, oh, you're right there, followed by Ricky Weirich, you're up next. Good, Good morning, morning, commissioners. Good morning. Um, oh, uh, wait, one moment. Um, can you add th three minutes for her? Three minutes, right? Do you have the, Please. Yep. Three minutes. I'm, I apologize, it wasn't on my note. Yes, absolutely. That's appreciated. Yes, ma'am. Again, we are here today, this time asking for any update status concerning the potential floods caused by rain, mud, and sediment issues caused by Holiday Builder Schooner Landing Subdivision. If I'm not mistaken, the engineer at the time of overseeing and then approval was Tom Hammond. Now, too sad, too late to address the builder. However, the deliberate slope is causing all rain sediment into our property. It could have been corrected in 2019 when we, the homeowners, began to contact the appropriate county s staff who from 2019 to 2022 were completely aware before any pads, prevention was the solution at that time. What happened to code 1101-2? We have an update, a positive note, but not a completed positive result as of today. After the last BOCC meeting, I met Mr. Jamie Higdon. We set a day and he came to our property. We were impressed. Sounded as if a survey was gonna happen to see what could be done. I also received a call from Ms. Joy Blackman that truly gave me hope things were going to go forward and issues corrected. What did happen was Reggie did come to our property, had equipment to blow out the much plugged drainage openings. Then a big rain came, water began to flow. Then it stopped, ditch was full again. Luckily, no more rain. Again, Matt Skipper visited, also Kevin Blanchard. Yes, we are seeing county checking out our drainage issues. We also had a county work release crew come, string trim, and then they worked digitally. However, ditch was completely full of water. All the lead weeds that were causing the water to no longer flow. We also have a large county grass cutter that cut both sides of Welver, Weller by our home, however, did not even possibly address the ditch. Yes, we are grateful. Also grateful, no storms so far. A big issue seems to be that most of the crew is, acro is across from our street, facing us on Mars Drive alongside Weller. The culvert is overgrown. The blockage causes our drainage to back up. That was an issue we were told we will be back to clean the side of Mars and Weller. All this drainage is connected. I continue to pick up trash in the ditch, now dry, no rain. My husband attempted to string trim to hopefully get some of the big br brush out. I am so grateful to Mike Kerb, Miss D. Redsky, along with the Flood Defender crew family, also the county crew and engineers who also has shown interest in our situation. Thank you to the county staff who have come, observed the obvious, and also made positive suggestions to correct us. Please come back, please complete it, and, exp and do what you explained to us. Sometimes it does take a village. Thank you very much. I also wanted to add with the homeless situation, my husband's going to speak. The two that just spoke, we're gonna give them information. Actually, we, Mr. Commissioner Mays left, mm -hmm. but um, I know it's on his heart. So when he speaks, he has letters, but he only has five. Yep, I got one of them. We, cool. ran, we ran out of ink on his. Uh oh, okay, <laughs> thank you. All right, Ricky Weirich, you're up next. You're recognized. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, the best way to watch a community is to know the community. 
The best way to know the community is to build and care for the community as a whole. This requires having group decisions, investing in help and uh, community members around us in the meaningful ways. With, what, with that said, our meeting on the 27th will do that and more. So we invite the homeless to another outdoor venue to get the conversation of help outcome started in a uh, functional sense and said, and yes, Mike Kohler will be there. And hopefully other commissioners who care deeply for the homeless will be present. A local pastor, Ahab Clark, at the Revival Center has been a guest at our neighborhood watch. He has shared his heart and his concerns for the less fortunate. The venue will, f will fund and this venue will fund a, and it, huh. it will also be extremely productive for all. If you enjoy living live music, karaoke, etc., chatting with the homeless people and others, solving problems, fellowshipping with the county commissioners, and eating good food, then please attend. And please help let us know if you are scheduled this in. Our neighborhood is diverse. We all see things with different eyes, and sometimes it takes a great deal of patience to understand our fellow man. When injustice falls on those we don't know, or crimes are committed against those through though of as enemies, it is too easy to not care. A good cure is to connecting with the neighbors, seeing and showing the goodness we are all capable of. When we live this truth, we overcome. Thank you very much, Mr. Weir. Okay. Next up, Melissa Barberi, followed by Victoria Griffin. Good morning. My Good morning. name is Melissa Barberi, and I'm a resident on Finley Drive with my husband and eight children. And I'm here today to oppose the Outpost Bayou Building Project. After reading over the staff notes from the project a few weeks ago, I was happy to see that construction and public traffic would not be allowed to use Finley Drive and would be limited to emergency vehicles. However, upon further review, I am still uneasy about any connection to Finley Drive, and here's why. Since reading the staff notes, I happened in a conversation with my nephew and his friends, all students at UWF, some of whom live in the new apartment complexes along University Parkway. According to them, the apartments were not built with enough parking to accommodate all the tenants. These students report that they end up parking as far away as Target and hitching a bus ride or walk to their apartments. I couldn't believe it. After that conversation, I happened to talk to my pastor, and he confirmed that uh, the complexes had come to the church leadership and um, asked if the church parking lot which is relatively close to the complexes, could be used by their tenants because of parking issues at the complexes. This tells me that the county has been approving development sites with inadequate parking for vehicles. This made me come back to Outpost Bayou proposal, which no doubt will have more than one car at each residence, with one car garage and a driveway anticipated for each house, where do the extra cars park? As of right now, the development is not allowing parking on the already narrow private roads, Will some residents find it more convenient to drive to the back of Finley, park on our street, and cross over to their homes? I am concerned that traffic will end up on Finley. To stop this from happening, I would propose that the developers not have any access on Finley, maintain a 15-foot vegetation buffer and the 8-foot fence line around the whole southern border of the development. This would allow the residents on Finley Drive to maintain their current quality of life and not have the extra traffic or the eyesore of a development not in character with our neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up, Victoria Griffin. Good morning. Good morning. Um, why are the engineers not required to follow up-to-date data? The engineer on this project for the Outpost Bayou and Townhomes is using data from 1960 for the wet holding pond. When new data is available, 
from 2014. Why are the outpost townhomes not being required to follow Coastal Code 118 to reduce exposure of people and property to natural hazards? The way the design is currently right now, the East Holding Pond behind my home does not have a 75 foot wooded buffer zone that is needed to protect my home, nor is the construction of the wet holding pond safe as an engineer is not using up to date data. This will put my home as well as my neighbor's home in direct line of high winds and flooding. Why does he not understand this? Does he not care? What improvements will be required for Jojo Road and West Side Drive? Jojo cannot be widened, which will end up directing much of the traffic using West Side Drive up to Nine Mile. Has this been studied? Can West Side Drive and Jojo handle 300 cars plus on already congested roads? Currently, also, there is one light over at Walmart. There would actually be a, have to have another light so close to that in order to have safe traffic. The turnaround next to the property on Wood Run is right up against the property. There needs to be a buffer zone of more than 30 feet of, I've understood magnolia trees or would be a good soundproof and uh, a windbreaker to protect this, the, the damage. Also, the water runoff into Wood Run could cause additional problems. Thank you. Thank you very much. Will Smith, you're up, followed by Jean Brown. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm down here again th this morning to have some issue address. I'm very concerned each time I come down and we address this committee, I don't see anything going on in the community in reference to what the topic that I, topics that I bring up, like the crime, the discrimination, and things of that nature. And I'm just wondering, have any of y'all got on board with me concerning our, the neighborhoods? See, because like, we have some very serious stuff going on here in Pensacola, not just in the city, county, the scamming kind of nationwide, you know? So I'm just wondering how this committee come together with some kind of idea with the issue that I have brought up and address these things. See, because like uh, it is getting ridiculous here in Pensacola. On a daily basis, people are being killed. Drugs are being busted right there in front of the police. You know, things are not being accomplished. Things are not being done. And each time I come down, only thing I can get from you guys is thank you, Mr. Smith, you know, and sit down. So I feel like you're not as concerned about the Escambia County as I am, or you're not addressing the situation. I don't see anything being broadcast on television pertaining to the matters. It's, you, can, uh, you can just ride up and down the street and see crime are being committed in your neighborhoods and things of that nature. So like, I'm just wondering, you know, are there any concern up there pertaining to these matters? It need to be addressed. I mean, seriously, y'all need to get, with, get, uh, get some kind of committee over these people who are in charge and make sure that the people are being protected in the neighborhoods. You know, so that's what I came out here for. That's what I have to say because like, I get no response. I don't see any advertising. I don't see anyone in the committee beating the bushes or anything pertaining to the matter. So this is my biggest concern. This is why I keep Thank coming you. down. Th Thank you, sir. Thank you. Gene Brown, followed by Don Cetrin. Good morning, I'm Jean Brown of 1475 Finley Drive for 54 years. I oppose the Thompson <laughs> the Outpost Bayou development. Finley Drive has a big stormwater runoff problem. The developer is not responsible for solving all the Finley Drive's stormwater runoff problems, but he is responsible for not making the problem worse. Does Escambia County have a drainage easement which allows runoff from the development to flow onto my property? Stormwater flows through my yard. See the pictures. Stormwater fills roadside ditches. Stormwater drains from the center line of Finley onto the shoulders. There are basin maps uh, with green drainage arrows that you have. A question for Escambia County that some of us have. 
Is the upland acreage basin delineation correct in considering the stormwater runoff from Finley Drive on both the pre- and post-development basin map? The pre-development and post-development uh, shows Pond A, 5.9 acres and 11.7 acres. Pond B, 8.7 acres, 5.0 acres. A total of 17 acres and 16 acres. The development site acreage has 22.2 more or less acres. Water flows downhill. See the topographic survey. The elevation of my east boundary is 77 feet at the street and 79 feet at my back line and 74 at the low point in the middle. In order for the water to get from there to either detention pond A or detention pond B, the water has to flow uphill, either 436 feet or 200 feet in order to get to the storm sewer, has to flow 20 feet all uphill. To prevent more flooding onto my property, when the development is 87% pervious, there need to be some changes. The 16-inch culvert must be removed or modified. Okay. There will be grading. What about unintended consequences? Thank Remember you. Remember Finley Jojo. Yes, ma'am, we will. Thank you. Don Cetron, followed by Chris Kerb. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I live over on the west side and Jojo side of the Outpost Bayou project. And I just wanted to bring up a few concerns. Um, who will be taking care of the roads? Jojo is in horrible condition as it is now. Potholes, I'm not kidding, they're, they're fixed every two weeks. And some of the holes are causing problems with cars when they hit them. So, so that's a major concern. Who will take care of these roads? <clears throat> Knowing that um, with three to four bedroom possible townhomes, um, the cars are gonna be what, two to 400 more? So I, I just don't even know how this area can handle it, West Side as well as JoJo. And then all the construction cars and vehicles. Um, so that's one major issue, the roads. Um, another is um, how many people will be living in these units? Uh, three to four bedrooms, college kids in a residential neighborhood. So that's another concern. Um, and then the need to keep tree buffer zones um, for areas that would be um, coming in contact with other homes. Trees provide privacy, um, they provide definitely noise control, and they also provide um, stoppage for flooding issues. So those are three major concerns I would like everyone to consider. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Chris Kerb, you're recognized, followed by Larry Downs Jr., you're up on deck. Larry Downs Jr., you're up next. Morning, Chris. Good morning. Chris Kerr, Flood Defenders. Um, got a lot of folks coming here from JoJo and Finley. Uh, and there's a lot of people tagging uh, that project. Uh, it extends across the street to uh, Scenic Hills Basin, um, which is really interesting because uh, in your fiscal year 2024, I think you have a uh, local option sales tax. You have a uh, plan for Scenic Hills Basin study. You might want to bring that forward and go ahead and start that basin study and start doing a watershed approach to looking at the, your projects and your, your permitting of developments. Um, because uh, all these accumulative impacts from using 1960s FDOT rainfall data, um, it's adding up and it's causing problems. Um, I think your engineering department ought to go ahead and issue a technical memorandum, basically requiring that no Atlas 14 data be used for stormwater design in Escambia County. You have that authority to do that. Um, I think you can prevent a lot of problems. Um, another thing I'd like to mention is San Rosa County, they allow four minutes for speakers. Mm -hmm. Their public forum is included in their actual board agenda. Um, I'd like to see y'all uh, expand your public forum time frames. Uh, Pam and Rick came up here. I've sent y'all an email on that. I'd like to request that y'all want uh, to do a survey of that area and come up with a solution on Weller Avenue. And both of these 
projects or development caused drainage problems. Um, Thank you. That's your time. Maybe you should increase your drainage impact Thank fees. Thank you very much. That's your time. Anita Geiner, you're up next, followed by Mary Lou Newton. I don't see Larry. Larry must have left. Good morning. I'm Anita Gaynor at Finley Drive. I'm opposed to whatever they're calling it today, Thompson Bayou. Um, so last time I ran out of time, and I have a little stick, but I'm going to just tell you up front is that, you know, the roads really stink right there. And I showed you the data last time where basically there's like 30 houses on JoJo Road, and yet they have 1,600 cars that go down their road every day. Did, uh, Mr. Berry, did y'all have a question over there? Something I can help y'all with? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Anita, I'm sorry, but if Anita, I'm in my just, two Anita, minutes, please, just, just okay. address me, please. So, anyway, so the question I have is, I think you need to cut off JoJo Road and make it to where West Side Drive has to bear all that traffic with the red light, since you let Pen Air Credit Union be built on that road to start with. So, um, and and I'm going to give the rest of my time, but I'm just, I really think that you need to look at that and and decide. Can the road handle it? I mean, where are, if you have three and four bedroom homes in there, and they're three and four bedrooms, they're 20 feet wide, 80 foot long, there's not even enough ro room to park a car. And not only that, but if you have four bedrooms, you have four, uh, four people up there living there that have cars, there's no parking for them. There's no parking, no extra parking. There's enough room for one car in a garage and one car in the driveway, and there is no roadside parking. So it's going to be a big hazard. I mean, I've got pictures on here of people run, running literally down Jernigan because there's no sidewalks, there's no roadway on the side, and that road has a lot of traffic. So it's a, it's a, you don't want people killed. And that's what's going to happen if we don't fix the infrastructure of those roads. So anyway, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Mary Lou Newton, followed by Larry Downs, Jr. Hi. Hi. I'm from Tangent Heights subdivision, where we are responsible for our own drain water. Unless the county allows a contractor to come in and flood out all of us south of a ridge, which water does run downhill. Thank you, lady, for checking that out earlier. I've notified you since yep. May yep. of all the videos. Now the county has come back and said, oh, well, they didn't follow the code enforcement. Well, thanks, because eight of us are damaged now. There's houses that are rotting. All my eight neighbors that live right next door to me, one of them's got U-Haul pods in her front. She's got a 20-inch ditch dug around her house because her living room and dining room furniture is out in her front yard. My other neighbor's got water under his house. I have water under my house. One thing that all of the insurance and all the suing of all the contractors and all y'all guys not doing your job and not enforcing these codes can replace everything materialistic. But you know the one thing you can't replace is my horse. And my horse is like my child. It's an emotional attachment to me. And he has been permanently injured because I've had to move him from his pristine park that I built for him over six years ago, working my butt off every day to make sure he had a home to come to. I had to remove him from his home, and now he's been permanently injured. So my horse is now a yard ornament. He's 100% foundation bred, the last of his line, and you guys cannot replace that ever. So get your guys moving over there in Tangent Heights and do something instead of flooding us all out where we have to come back and fall through sovereign domain, all of that, and suing every one of y'all for not doing your jobs and being incompetent and inept. Thank you, and I hope you have a great weekend. Thank you. All right, excuse me, no. Larry Downs Jr., final speaker. That's mine. Hello, Larry Downs Staff, Jr. Staff's aware. Staff, hang on before you start. Hey, hold it, hold Wait, it. Hang, on, hang on before you start. Hold on. Ma'am. Hang on. We, uh, Wes, yes. you're well aware of what's going on. We forwarded all that information to engineering. Everyone's aware of it. All right. You recognize her. Thank you much. Boy, she was kind of hot. <laughs> uh, hey, I agree with uh, uh, the lady back there, Anita Gannert, I think it is. Uh, when the citizens are speaking, it would be nice if y'all would, you know, not have, you know, 
the conversations up there like you're not listening to them because they're kind of paying the salaries and kind of paying for some of this stuff. Uh, so anyways, uh, I think I was informed to come up here. Uh, Mr. Bender, I, I just want to make sure everybody hears this because I think I was informed to come up here and resign from the uh, contractor competency board. And, uh, you know, and I, I said, I'll, I'll come there Thursday, which is today. So anyways, uh, I'm, I'm not going to resign because I've done nothing wrong. I recuse myself when I feel like it's necessary, when I feel like there could be some impropriety or, or at least a perception of impropriety. I've done nothing wrong. I'm one of nine board members, one of nine. Now, I know that there's a few, like Melissa, who comes up here, even told Mr. Lumen May a year and a half ago that, quote, this is what, this is what was said in a meeting here. So I'm trying to figure this out, too. An organized system to defraud. Now, putting this blame on the contractor competency board, that, that, how would you ever get any new board members who are good people when the first thing, first thing two contractors do something terrible, they do something bad, and then you blame the contractor competency board. And then you acknowledge that you knew about something that was nefarious, which wasn't, and you admit it a year and a half ago you knew, but yet you did nothing about it. The reason why you did nothing about it is because, is because there was nothing to do. Larry, your time is up. Thank you. Oh. You've made your point. Thank you. Any questions? No, no questions for you. Thank all right. You. If y'all want to get rid of me, you got to do it yourself. All right. Fair enough. Have a good day. We're going to take a five-minute break. In between, we will come back at 11 minutes after 9 and start our meeting. Adjourned.
Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seat. We're going to start in about one minute. So we'll just, when it runs out, we'll just have to vote by hand. Yep. We can, we can adapt. Just hopefully, maybe, I don't know, maybe it'll last. Who knows? These are the two speakers we have. Thank you. Appreciate that. GMR. Are they both on the same item? No. Or G, oh, but the GMR and then... Car 3. Car okay, gotcha. Two. Gotcha. Good morning. This is the regular Board of County Commissioners meeting, September 22nd, 2022. It's 9.14 a.m. Please turn your cell phone to the vibrate, silence, or offsetting. The Board of County Commissioners allows any person to speak regarding an item on the agenda. The speaker is limited to three minutes unless otherwise determined by the chairman to allow sufficient time for all speakers. Speakers shall refrain from abusive or profane remarks, disruptive outbursts, protests, or other behavior which interferes with the orderly conduct of the meeting. Upon completion of the public comment period, Discussion is limited to board members and questions raised by the board. This morning, Commissioner Bender will bring the invocation. Commissioner Bender, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this morning, we have the Reverend Dr. Michael Hoffman uh, from Christ Church. Uh, thank you, Dr. Hoffman, for coming here. So in my tradition, I say the Lord be with you, and you say and also with you. So the Lord be with you. Also with you. Direct us, O Lord, in all our doings, with thy most gracious favor and further us with thy continual help, that in all works begun, continued, and ended in thee, we may glorify thy holy name. And Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, send down upon those who hold office in this county the spirit of wisdom, charity, and justice, that with steadfast purpose they may faithfully serve in their offices to promote the well being of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Father Michael. All right, are there any items to be added to the agenda? Madam Attorney? No, sir. Commissioner Bender, any items to be added? Commissioner Barry? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, I have a discretionary uh, expenditure item. Yep, it's been distributed. Commissioner May? I, I don't, but I, I do want to add on to what you're doing for the Boy Scouts. I mean, oh, okay, fantastic. Yeah, I, I know the great judge does great work, so I want to add $1,000 to whatever, what you're Thank doing. Thank you very much for that. I know no, that'll mean no, a lot to the Boy Scouts. All right, not a Commissioner problem. Underhill? Nothing, Mr. Wait, Chairman. Um, Steve? Mr. Chairman, I, I would like to do the same. Uh, I guess we can, it's a decent, depending on how we go through the agenda, now's a decent time to do that. But I'd like to add 1000 to the Boy Scouts uh, that you're doing. and. Uh, thousand to the on bikes that Commissioner May is doing. Fantastic, that's great. Can we make the uh, the appropriate? Okay, Delane has got it. Okay, gentlemen, that's very generous. Thank you. Very much. Thank you, Commissioner Barry. I'm, I know Walker Wilson would greatly appreciate that. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, Commissioner Underhill. Did you have anything? No. No. Okay, uh, Wes. Yeah, I'd like to add a discussion item under Car Three, a verbal discussion item to discuss Contractor Competency Board and the possible removal of Larry Downs Jr. from that board. Okay. All right. We'll show that as added at the table. All right. At this point, uh, the board uh, uh, the board chair would so move, Mr. Chairman, as, am as amended, as amended. Second. Okay. Well, we got a motion, and multiple seconds. Uh, please vote. Was I the hold up on that? I probably, I probably was the hold up. All right. Oh, okay. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, just try that. Let's see what that. We're having some issues. 
Doug just had to vote again. Okay. Uh, Lumen, did you vote on that? All right, we're good. The agenda as amended passes 5-0 unanimously. All right, Commissioner's Forum. Commissioner Bender, you're recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, wanted to recognize the uh, first responders uh, from Escambia County that were recognized yesterday at the um, third annual salute to first responders. Uh, Brad Hathaway with Emergency Management, Mark Carter with Emergency Communications, uh, A.J. Johnson, Pensacola Beach Lifeguards, Houston Harvell uh, with EMS and Stephen uh, Booth with Fire Rescue. Um, of course, there were a number of others um, from the city and um, uh, search and rescue uh, that were also recognized. And then also um, Captain Craig Ammons was recognized for his Lifetime Achievement Award. Um, so, so that was great. Um, uh, on that, um, I'd, if, if now would be a good time, sir, um, I was going to have our emergency director uh, just give a brief update on uh, what we're possibly seeing for the end of next sure. week. Sure. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, um, Eric, you want to have uh, him uh, Travis. Oh, Travis. I'm sorry. Yeah. Hey, we, yeah. Hey, Eric, I'm still going to Eric. Travis. Sorry, man. <laughs> uh, so things have, uh, looks like the models have changed since last night when, when I last spoke to Travis. Uh, but uh, just try to get it on everybody's radar and to get prepared. Sure, I can give a brief update on it. Uh, so as you, as you just said, the models are definitely uh, divergent. So we've, the models from this morning have it uh, either going into New Orleans or, or uh, uh, the, the, uh, the Big Bend area so of, of Florida. So it is completely too early right now to say that it's coming to us or where it's going, but the confidence is pretty solid that it is going to move into the Gulf. Mm. And so that, uh, then that makes everybody aware that every, everybody on the Gulf Coast has to be aware of that. Yep. So I just wanted to take a, a minute just to say that, you know, it's been, a, it's been a relatively light season and I think a lot of people might have let their guard down and this is a good weekend uh, to, for people to start getting that preparedness mindset back in. Get that extra case of water, get the gas ready, check out the generator, you know, break out the shutters, make sure that you can get to them and that you can put them up. Uh, you know, it's, it, this is not a gloom and doom presentation. It's just a, you know, we just, we want to make sure everybody's still got this on their radar. Uh, you know, we have a, I've, we found out here recently, and I think I've mentioned this before, that our, our younger, younger folks, especially college age kids, they, they have no idea about a storm coming right. until it's there on top of them. And so, uh, you know, everything that we can do to, you know, to push our message out, making sure we're getting people to our website. Uh, we want to just make sure that everybody is getting that preparedness back in mind. Thank you, Travis. Appreciate that. Thank and, you, Mr. Uh, Bender. You know, we do have a, a new uh, employee, Scotland, uh, on staff who's a meteorologist. Um, and, um, and so she was going through the models uh, every day. The, every, the, the every forecast day. does seem like this could be a... <clears throat> A relatively strong storm it could um, you know I know everyone thinks of Sally we didn't have the winds uh, it was more of the rain in the and the storm surge um, but this one has uh, all of the above um, so we the, the models run four times a day and we check those uh, every time that they run uh, we're having a call with the state uh, the, the state calls will start to kick off uh, tomorrow uh, so we'll, we're obviously going to be on those all weekend and then uh, come back on Monday to, to kind of figure out that. We should know a little bit more by Monday where we're at. And, and it's expected uh, late next week would, would be the, if it, if it were yes, come sir. this way, it would be late no, next weekend or so. One model shows Thursday, one model shows Sunday. So. Okay. Thank, thank, you, you, thank you, Commissioner Bender. Thank you, Travis. All right, Commissioner Barry, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to uh, thank George Blackman and, and some of our folks, specifically Chris Phillips, for uh, you know being very responsive and, and quite a bit of help the last couple of weeks getting uh, uh, you know getting some things moving. And uh, and James Duncan, who uh, works with the you know kind of manages the resurfacing contracts and those things for uh, uh, you know we've got nine miles of Highway 95A that have started on. Uh, resurfacing started a few days ago and um, did get verification this morning that we had that we had some signage installed to try to uh, try to redirect traffic out from in front of uh, Jim Allen Elementary so that folks that uh, are non-local traffic would take Neal Road 
uh, between drop off and pickup times. They would use Neal Road to get from Old Palafox to, or to get from Molino to Cantonment rather than in front of Jim Allen. So that signage was, uh, was installed yesterday. So that's, uh, that's great news. And hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully all our through traffic folks in that area will, uh, you know, will utilize that, uh, that little sidestep. I mean, <clears throat> you know, the truth is as much as possible, we want, uh, you know, we want all of our through people on our state maintained roads. That's where we want our heavy traffic. That's where we want our, you know, that's where we want our high traffic count. If folks uh, don't have to be on our roads, they're uh, better served to be on the, the state maintained ones. But thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Berry. Commissioner May, you recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I certainly uh, want to recognize our first responders. It was good seeing Commissioner uh, Bender and yourself as well. Um, certainly, I think an unsung hero in our community uh, who really put this together to recognize our first responders was Sue Strong. Uh, and she's always giving others credit and making sure others are taken care of. And I think that as a community, as first responders, we should be very grateful to uh, Sue Strong, WAR, for putting that together and uh, along with uh, others. But she certainly was, was the lead. Uh, also, send my condolences uh, to the Apostle Jerome Kidd's family. I know on uh, this past weekend we had his funeral, and this past week we had uh, little man Douglas Durden, a five-year-old young man who participated in my program who lost his life, and our prayers and condolences are out to his family. Uh, that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner May. Commissioner Underhill, you're recognized. Nothing for the good of the whole. Thank you. All right. I, too, want to thank everyone who participated in the First Responders Day. I in particular, I want to thank all the sponsors. Um, without the sponsors, we can't do what we need to do to recognize all the great work. And I also want to say, um, this is my first time attending the event, and I was I was really really heartened to see that they recognized every everyone. I mean, all departments. I mean, we had Highway Patrol, we had even Search and Rescue, um, uh, the police force, the, the sheriff's office, all the folks from our uh, from our county departments. So it was really a great uh, event, uh, real feel good. Sue Strawn is, is a class act, always she is, and she ran it smoothly. Uh, it was within, <laughs> I couldn't believe it. She finished it in an hour, which was unbelievable. Uh, I expected it to be a two Mind you at my request. I, oh, oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. But So I want to give a shout out to Pensacola State College, uh, Dr. Ed Meadows, Harvester's Federal Credit Union, HCA Florida Healthcare for being the, the major sponsors, and then a number of us um, here on the board from the dais. I know Commissioner Bender was a sponsor, Commissioner May, was a sponsor and, and I was a sponsor. So we want to thank all the people that sponsored it and particularly want to thank all the first responders for what they do. And I also want to take a moment to thank everyone, staff and all the citizens who participated in a, a really a great day on Friday when we opened our first public library in uh, District 1 in, in Bellevue. And, you know, I anticipated a, a crowd, but I had no idea uh, of the crowd that we would get. And I was told anecdotally that we actually exceeded the fire code uh, within like an hour of opening the door. So it was a fantastic day, Chamber of Commerce weather. Everyone was happy. Uh, I didn't have any, there was not one negative comment. It, it was like, it was perfect. It was like a perfect day. They don't come around very often So in this job. So I want to thank all the staff members. I want to thank all the students from Bellevue Elementary. I want to thank the principals from Bellevue and uh, Middle and Bellevue Elementary. And I want to thank all the citizens in the area who came. And I want to thank staff who worked really hard to open that library. Todd Humble, Wes Marino, um, Rob Hogan. Uh, I mean, everyone really pulled from the same side of the rope to get that over the line. So it's a great facility for the community. And I'm very, very happy. Uh, it was a great day. So thank you. Uh, Wes, anything for you? All right. And Jeff, let me yes, apologize. Um, I don't know how it slipped my schedule to not be there at the library. And it was my intentions to be there because that's important. And yeah. I give you my commitment. If you expire before I'm no longer, in, if I'm still in this seat when you expire, I'll move the name it after you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope um, that never happens, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's awfully kind of. I mean, no, I would, I would, so you know, you you can rest peacefully, that knowing that your name will be ever remembered. What if I outlive you, though? That's problematic. But I'm not going to be able to help you. <laughs> you probably will. I mean, but uh, in all seriousness, Trevor's here from uh, Representative Andrade's office. On last evening, we had a great meeting uh, with a lot of the uh, Andrade's team, and uh, they're here today. They don't necessarily want to speak, but we certainly want to recognize uh, Representative Andrade's uh, staff members for being here. Thank you guys for being here. Awesome. Awesome. Very good. Uh, sorry, Mr. Yes. Chairman, yes. One more thing. I, I did want to uh, talk about. We had the. Uh, PSC had the ribbon cutting for the uh, truck driver training. Oh, okay. um, on uh, I think it was Tuesday, 
Um, so we had a number of our staff there. Um, Bob, Bob Cole was happy to see that we could find our way across over into Milton. Um, but, um, you know, it is a, a state of the art facility that, um, uh, that they can uh, really help uh, educate and train truck drivers. Um, and it's, uh, there's a need and, and fairly well paying. Um, and so uh, I know that, uh, of course, we're always looking. And uh, so if, if people want to look into that program, uh, they, I think they said they've got it down to about eight weeks, uh, hoping to reduce that a little bit more. So um, thank you to HR and, and Public Works for, for coming out there and, and uh, supporting that. Fantastic. And that was good, Robert. And, you know, I certainly reached out to Sam Parker. And, you know, and there's still some places that, you know, in Santa Rosa County that, you know, I just can't go. <laughs> so I'm glad you were there. All right, gentlemen. Um, next up, did the clerk's office receive the proofs of publication for the public hearings on the agenda and the board's weekly meeting schedule? Mr. Chairman, the clerk's office has received all proofs. Mr. Chairman, all right. yes. move that we waive the reading. Okay. Motion to waive. Second. Motion to second to waive the reading. Please vote. Motion to waive the reading passes unanimously. And, and just for the board's information, my, my iPad is not functioning properly. I'm down to 2%, so once it goes down, we're just going to have to go to old-fashioned hand votes. Uh, it's not charging, even though it says it is. It's just not holding the charge. So, so anyway. All right, uh, here we go. Uh, public hearings. 901, public hearing for the consideration of fiscal year 2022 proposed grant application for mass transit. Um, I don't believe we have any speakers. Rodriguez Kimbrough, do you want to come up and say anything about it? Uh, this project here is just a simple, uh, again, we want to do our best to, as we drive, attempt to drive towards excellence to be able to get as many uh, of our normal grants, but as we continue to apply for competitive grants, this is just a start for us, and we're hoping again in the next three to five years we can be uh, a transit agency of excellence in the state of Florida. Fantastic. I appreciate you being here. Okay. And this is a 50% match, uh, Rodriguez? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, only on the, uh, the actual operational items are a 50% match. All the capital items it says in there, those are 20% match. Okay. Cool. Hey, why are you there, Rodriguez? Um, the free bus pass for children, does that have... Has that ended? Uh, no, we still we still have our summer wheels uh, program every summer. Uh, we still allow uh, our free bus passes for students. At, when does uh, that end? It actually ends at the end of the summertime, uh, and so it did end on September fifth. Uh, but I mean, we still have it every year. Well, I'm, I'm gonna get, I want you to get with Claire and get with that program. I mean. Children are still finding problems getting to after-school programs, sporting programs in school. I'd really like to look at what's the uh, adverse effect on the budget to continue to give free passes to children under the age of 18. Okay, well, we don't think it'll be an adverse effect to our actual budget at all, so I'll get with Ms. Claire. I'll get with Claire. We need to implement yeah. that. I mean, children, you know, the buses are not running, so if there's opportunity in, to look at the bus lines of how they hit the school. So if you would get with Claire and her staff. I'd love to see that. Mr. Commissioner, I, I don't care if we, give, if we give direction today to go ahead and do that. I mean, so if you look at the overall budget, so little of that is going to be is Fairbox revenue currently and whatever portion of Fairbanks revenue would be attributed to someone under 18 is, is also going to be correspondingly low. If you want to go ahead and give that direction. Yeah, I'd like to give that direction. And, and have it done. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's excitement for me because those are the future riders of our transit system. So if we're going to get single occupancy vehicles off the road, that's a start. So yeah. I look forward to it. And, and there are creative ways where they have volunteers in other cities where they have uh, bus moms and same way they do in the school district. I mean, I know the ride, ride, ridership is not high, but if we start coordinating uh, with after school programs and rec programs, I think that it would increase and you certainly could find volunteers to help ride the bus. Yes, sir. All right. Any other discussion on this? If not, the chair would entertain a motion on this. So no move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Motion second. second. Does the motion include the part about the zero fare? I don't need no. We, I, I think we just give direction. We don't. Yeah, I think, I think he understands. Only direction. So the yeah, motion, yeah, so the mean, motion is for what's actually in yeah, the back of the right there. Yeah. Understood. Thank you. All right. Please vote. You good, Delaney? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Cool. The ridership is not high with children, but it needs to be increased. All 
All right, the 901 passes unanimously. Clerk and Comptroller's report. Pam Childers, you're recognized. Thank you. I have three items on the agenda. The first one is the TDT collections for August of this year. Um, note we are still tracking 5% to 5%, and we're at 20 million so far. That is a record high. We continue to have developments with additional fines and Airbnb units. We continue to have hotel builds. We continue to see this revenue increase. We also have documents that are filed with the clerks to the board's office and minutes and repairs reports Thank that we prepare. Move the clerk's Thank report you. as presented. Sorry. Motion and a second to move the clerk's report. I will tell you, Chairman, that I have not heard yet from the state on the TDT audit that was supposed to complete in May. We have had some out. conversations hoping to get something back before budget season in case there's something that either party needs to do. Yes, ma'am. But no communication. They are still continuing on their findings. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate that. Thank you. We got a motion and a second to approve the clerk's report. Please vote. All right. The clerk's report passes unanimously. And I, I think it's pretty noteworthy that even in the recession that we're in, and it's about to get worse, um, that Petscola and Petscola Beach, Escambia County, is still way up in our collections. People are still coming here. People are still building here. So um, I just think it's worth noting that. Other parts of the country, it's a different story. Horace, you're recognized. Yes, sir. Chairman, commissioners, good morning. We have um, public hearing. This is the second of two public hearings concerning opt-out request for 2022-01. This is still to remove. Second of two public hearings. Right on. And we do have a speaker, uh, Jacqueline uh, Amy Rogers is here. Jacqueline Rogers. Jacqueline Amy Rogers is my Facebook name, but thank you. Um, commissioners, it's probably an exercise in futility, but I'm going to try one more time to tell you that you don't have the, the, the data and analysis for this. This time, I'm backed up by the Florida Department of Transportation, who wrote to the county June 24th and said you did not do a traffic data um, study. And so the Development Services Department wrote back and said, well, we did a screening, and the screening said that Cedar Tree Road was a dirt road and we don't have right of way for it. And so we didn't, they don't have a study, and they said that the dirt road going alongside this parcel doesn't have right of way. And so they said, well, is that good enough? And FDOT, FDOT wrote back and said, we still don't have a study. Now, FDOT, DOT, DOT, FDOT can only comment on things that are state assets. So they could only comment on SR95. And they said, we don't anticipate it being an issue, but that does not relieve your board or your county and your development services department from doing a traffic study, not only for SR95, which is Highway 29, but also for either Neal Road, if you're coming in off a hillock, that's where you posted your signs, or on Cedar Tree Road. In their screening, they said there's a dirt road with no right of way. Also, at the planning board meeting, the board member, who is now the chairman of the Cottage Hill Water Works, said that they do not have the capacity for this upzoning. In your data and analysis for compatibility, your staff put that the LDR zoning is compatible with the conservation neighborhood that's there now. There's no LDR zoning. This is LDMU, which is seven dwelling units per acre, and MDR, which is 10 dwelling units per acre. So your staff analysis has mistakes in it, and you can read that in your backup. You also have nothing about the prime soils that are all over this property. This property has wetlands on it and is adjacent to a flooding area. And you can see that in the maps. I have copies of those. I emailed you copies. This is challengeable. I, I just. We rely on the local county commission to protect us from flooding, to protect us from adverse effects. The state can only comment on so much unless it's challenged by a citizen. Why do the citizens have to make you guys do your job? Your job is to make the staff do the analysis to show that what the effect will be for flooding, for potable water, for traffic network. And at the time when you pass this today, you are supposed to have evidence that there is a traffic network that can support this, and you don't have it. So I ask the commissioners that you deny this request until the traffic study is done and shows that there is an adequate traffic network for MDR and LDMU. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Chair, we entertain a motion on this item. No further speakers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move the 915. I'll second it. Discussion? Yep, go ahead. Um, well, I actually agree with uh, everything that uh, the previous speaker just said, um, and those are those elements are for, uh, it will, will lead to my no vote uh, for the upzoning. Um, what we have before us is simply the opt-out from the sector plan. Um, and in keeping with basically all of my votes on this, since we've opted out to a former commissioner who actually had something to do with the opt-out, um, these are folks that did not have anything to do with the opt-in. Um, and so uh, I've uh, had to reluctantly vote uh, in favor of all of the opt-outs. I think it's bad for, um, for the development uh, and, and continues to accelerate the development in North County in a way that's unsustainable. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's, it's not appropriate to opt people into things uh, that they were essentially opted out of the discussion that created it. So for that reason, um, I'll be voting in favor of the motion as it is. Right on. Okay. Uh, any, no further discussion. Please vote. All right. Uh, that passes four zero with Commissioner May uh, from off the dais. All right. County Administrator's Report. Wes, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. There are nine items on the Technical Public Service Consent Agenda, and there are no changes. Okay. Do we have any speakers on any items on CAR 1? I do not believe that we do. All right. I move the Technical and Public Service Consent. Second. Motion to second to move the Technical Public Service. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Going to be by hand. I just lost my screen. Okay. Uh, all those who are in favor, signify by saying aye and raising your right hand. All right. Any opposed? Seeing none, it passes 4 0. With Commissioner May off the dais. Um, we're just going to go to hand votes from this point forward because we're starting to lose our equipment here. All right. Uh, next up, we got car two. There are 51 items on the budget finance consent agenda, and there are no changes. Okay. Uh, we do have a speaker. Oh, it's on car three. Never mind. Do we have speakers on any of these? Nope, no speakers. Okay, any of these items uh, that you'd like to pull? If not, the chair would entertain a motion on car two. Move car two. We, uh, those few um, those few amendments to some of the discretionaries are noted. So oh, yeah, absolutely. Move, yeah, move the, move the entire budget and finance. And while we're, while we're on that topic, I appreciate you bringing that. Um, next month on the 6th, I had uh, already told Walker Wilson that I was going to do a $1,700 um, so I'll go ahead and add that today. Set 1,750. Uh, I think you have 1,750 on the agenda. Well, oh, I thought it was on October 6th agenda. Was it? It's on this. Okay, my bad. Never mind. I think I think there's 1,750. I think it was on bikes, but I'm not 100. Yeah, it's on. Okay. okay, it's on yeah. bikes. All right, it must have been added at the last minute. Okay, very good. So, all right, so we'll just we got a motion a second as it is with the, with those changes from this morning. I don't have a second. Heather, are you good with that, or do we need to go through them again? Mr. Chairman, we don't have a second on that yet. Oh, just just second. a second. Okay, now we do. <laughs> Thought we did. Now we do. All right. Any other discussion, guys? Lumen? No, sir. All right. Uh, all those in favor of passing this item, please uh, say aye or raise your right hand. Aye. aye. Any opposed? Lumen, was that a yes? All right. Passes unanimously. All right, car three, we do have a speaker. Uh, but Mr. Chairman, right? yes, that sir. did include my, my add-on that was distributed. Did you get that, Delana? I have it, yes. It's for well, 500. Uh, yeah, 500 for Molina Park PTA. Yep. Did it make it to the end of the dais, though? We definitely do have it, Commissioner okay. Berry. Um, we have it, though, as like an add add item added to the agenda because it was already okay. so um, does it need to be voted on at the end? Yes, yeah, sir, well, that's okay. Thank you. Okay, so that didn't pass with this, but okay. All right, Wes, you got your discussion items? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, number one is uh, CAR 3-1 is concerned the authorization uh, for acquisition of real property on Fairfield Drive for wetland mitigation purposes. $90,900. All right. Uh, Chair, would entertain a motion on that. I think it's worthwhile. Wetlands. So moved. Okay. Second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion on this purchase? Seeing none. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, sir. So, uh, Wes, outstanding work. Um, this is a, uh, for those that are not familiar with it uh, in the audience, <clears throat> by purchasing this property, we've achieved two objectives. Um, it actually helps us uh, uh, with the, uh, you know, 
taking a property in the uh, you know close to the coast out of um, uh, the path of construction mm -hmm. and preserving uh, the limited amount of environment that we have here now, uh, but also enables the county to move forward through wetlands mitigation on projects in all five districts. Um, so it's, that's excellent, excellent governance and uh, you know, 22 acres of anything in Escambia County for 90K is a, uh, is a heck of a price. So uh, Wes, great, great job and to the staff that made it happen. Thank you, Commissioner. Thanks. All right, Wes, you're recognized for some more good news. Yeah, I could ask uh, Jeffrey Lovingood, and if that's your wife there, she she can come up with you. And Jamie, you can make your way up as well. Mr. Chairman of the Board, I, I'm I'm presenting to you uh, Jeffrey Lovingood to be the director of our Office of Procurement. I will tell you in the short amount of time that he's been back, it has been a world of difference. Uh, so I told somebody this morning we've uh, went from about 80 to 80, maybe possibly 85 solicitations in a year. As of yesterday, we have uh, 142 solicitations, and that's with a lot of this year being severely down there in procurement. Uh, so it's been a huge difference. It's in a very important office uh, department that we have because if we're not successful there, we drive no work out. And so it's key that we drive that work out. And so uh, I present to y'all Jeffrey Lovingood. He's done a fantastic job. He's ramping up. He's building his team. He's leading his team. And uh, I appreciate him so much. And I'm happy to present him to y'all. Thank you. The chair would entertain a motion on the slate. Mr. Chairman, I move the item. I want to, uh, uh, I want to thank Jeffrey for taking, uh, taking a little bit of time with me yesterday, helping me with something. And uh, uh, yeah, it seems like things are going very well. You know, I don't interact with uh don't interact with a whole lot of our folks in the in the building you know regularly but through uh you know through wes and allison it seems like things are moving considerably well it seems like you you know works pretty closely with Kristen and allison on you know on getting things through the pipeline to the board and you know i certainly uh lean on wes uh you know quite a bit about uh, about you know po's getting through and all that stuff and it seems like he's been a real uh, it seems like he's been a real asset for wes since he's come back so i think that's great Fantastic. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. This is on uh, both of the items, yes? Both items? Okay. And, oh, we do have a speaker. I'm sorry, we do have a speaker. And let's go ahead and hear from the speaker before we take the vote. Where did I put that? It's Larry. Oh, is it Larry? Yeah. It is Larry. Larry Downs Jr., are you here? Okay, he's not here. Please vote. All those in favor say aye. Do you want? Aye. Uh, I certainly vote for it. Do you want to give Jamie a chance to say something? As yeah, well? of course I'm going to. Oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. All right, this is both people, though. Yeah, this both item. people, okay. and then we're going to bring them up one by one. All right, so let's vote. All those in favor of this slate that's unanimous. Okay, you're recognized. Congratulations, Jeff. I was going to prepare a statement, but instead I just want to kind of speak from the heart for a moment. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to County Administrator uh, Wes Marino for taking a chance on a guy, uh, if you will. Uh, this is uh, a unique situation that we find ourselves in uh, or that we have found ourselves in where uh, staff was low, morale was low, uh, product was not getting put out uh, effectively or efficiently. And because of the team that we have, the team that we're building, uh, we have a lot of great things that have occurred already, uh, but we are just getting started. This is just the beginning. We have a lot of things I'm gonna, uh, we have a lot of things that we wanna accomplish. I'm gonna be coming before this board asking you for things that have not been asked for before. Uh, as long as they don't cost money. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I can make no promises. <laughs> Neither can uh, I. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but, but again, I just want to say thank you to uh, not only the board, uh, administration, obviously the clerk's office is a, a great team to work with, uh, but all the county departments have been uh, extremely responsive, have been extremely co collaborative. The, uh, the new team uh, leaders that we have here at the county, I believe, are some of the best we've had because uh, I've heard stories from people that have been here 30 and 40 years and, and some of the previous people we've had. And we've got a great team here, and I'm just happy and humbled to be a part of it. Right Thank on. you. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, Jamie Higdon. 
the floor is yours. Good morning. I thank y'all all for the vote of confidence and uh, I assure you I'm going to continue to carry out the direction of this board and administration in serving the citizens of this great county. And uh, I'm also going to use all the resources I have, as I always do, to help all the other departments succeed. And I will be the first to admit Jeff is a good breath of fresh air because it's taken a load off of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I thank you for that. And, Appreciate the confidence. Thank you, Jamie. Congratulations. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, if I could, I'd, I'd like to say just a few words about Jamie. Uh, when Jamie came on board at Public Works uh, with me, he was a breath of fresh air, and, and he's, he's remained that. I, I don't know how he does and accomplishes some of the things that he does, but I know one thing is about Jamie. I can call him anytime, day or night, seven days a week. He's going to pick the phone up. And he's going to say, boss, what can I do to help you? And that means a lot. And Jamie, I certainly appreciate that. All right. Wes Mr. Mr. Yes. Chairman, if you don't mind. Um, so, Wes, when I saw you and Allison uh, the other morning, I didn't necessarily notice, uh, notice this item on there. But um, now I, I ran, into a, uh, ran into a relationship that, uh, that Jamie and I shared at lunch yesterday. And he uh, told me what a good thing that it was, uh, that it was doing, that he had spoken to Jamie and congratulated him. And uh, I wasn't, uh, wasn't exactly, I said, yeah, he's, you know, he's doing a great job, but now I understand uh, the reason for the comment. And uh, uh, no, it does. <laughs> and, and I just texted him and I said, well, your, your, your congratulations uh, to our friend makes a little more sense now. Um, but, uh, you know, I haven't necessarily known Jamie that long, but um, Captain Kenny was, uh, was around from the time I was in elementary school with, uh, you know, uh, working on boats with friends and he, uh, you know, was, all, was, was, you know, was always around, was always a good time. And uh, I, know, I know Jamie's been a lot of help to you as you were, uh, you know, a lot of help for a number of us when you were at Public Works, you know, getting Jamie out there with you seemed like it, you know, it helped as a uh, light, a lot of stuff gets gets requested and re you know, required of you, and uh, someone has to help you be able to do that for you to be able to accomplish what we want, and so. Congratulations, great day. Uh, Wes, you had a, a final item? Yeah, uh, the add-on to the discussion uh, was to let the board have, a discuss have their own discussion about the contractor comps on the board uh, as a whole or as the removal of Larry Downs Jr. from that board. Okay, all right. Um, discussion on Larry Downs on the Contractor Competency Board. Any, Any speakers, Mr. Chairman? Uh, I, Larry had signed up, but I think he, le okay, now he's leaving, he came back. Larry, do you want to speak to this item or? Sure. Okay, all right, you'll be recognized with three minutes. Hello, Larry Downs Jr. again. Uh, I wanted to speak on, uh, on, on Jeff, uh, Jeffrey. Uh, because he brought up about two two meetings ago he said uh, hey I noticed that you're not on the vendor list he said is you know on the county's vendor list he says is that by uh, is that by uh, you know on purpose I said yeah it's on purpose because I don't you know I don't uh, I don't work for government I work for citizens I primarily do residential work for homeowners I don't even do work for builders. Maybe three, maybe three. The 90, 95% of my work is directly for homeowners. So, you know, I, I don't have a conflict of interest. I don't do, uh, I don't do work for the government, so I'm not on y'all's vendor list. I don't do work for the vast, major, major, major majority of all contractors, and I don't know all contractors like, you know, like some people might might insinuate. So whenever I volunteered for this board, it was the same, you know, I'm the same person I was then that I am now. Y'all know me. Nothing's changed. I recuse myself whenever I feel it's appropriate, which is what I think you want a board member to do. Being one of nine board members, you know, that's, that's a large board. And then to have citizens come up here and say, you need to replace the whole board. Replace the whole board. I mean, just imagine that. That's, and then to insinuate or to allow it to roll on like it's the board's fault. When the board is following y'all's ordinances, 
I mean, what more can a board do? And then Channel 3 does a disingenuous report. Y'all seen it. It's disingenuous. Uh, Melissa tells Lumen a year and a half ago that there's some kind of systemic plan to defraud. And he acknowledges that she told him that. And then he did nothing. So uh, if there was something, which there's not, there's not. Are you kidding me? You think that that board of citizens has anything to do with two dum-dums? Nothing. The other counties are having the same problem. They're still got cases rolling. That's two bad board members. That's like blaming the gun for the murder or blaming the vehicle for the, for the drunken driver. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. And I recuse myself, which is the appropriate thing to do. So I did nothing wrong. So if y'all want to replace me because you're getting pressure from a fringe group, you know, people don't know the story. I've got the story. I'm going to let the story go. But I'm just letting y'all know I'm not going to resign. So if y'all want to replace me, that's on y'all. But I represent all the citizens whenever I'm on that board because that's the right thing to do. Thank you, Larry. All right. Discussion on this topic? Seeing no discussion. I'll just kick it off. Uh, Larry, I have nothing against you personally. Um, I, uh, I had some significant disagreements with the reasons why you rec recused. Um, in 15 years, no, I, this isn't a discussion. I'm just going to say okay. what I'm going to say, and I'm going to do what I'm going to do. In 15 years, okay, he didn't want to listen. He could watch the tape. In 15 years in elected office, I've recused maybe six times total. It's because there's only limited circumstances when it's appropriate to do so. Um, because you did work for someone five years ago or you know someone, you don't get away with doing that. And when you serve on a board for the county, you're subject to the same rules. And I believe that to recuse on a couple of occasions was, um, well, I, I, I was frankly quite surprised that the attorney that was helping assist that volunteer board allowed that to happen. That's number one. But number two, uh, it, it's just it's just not something that should happen. I mean, I, when you volunteer for the board, you got to make tough votes. When you make tough votes, sometimes you got to vote things uh, against people that you know. And sometimes when you do that, you know, it's not popular and it's not um, a, a very uh, a fun thing to do, but it's part of it. Um, some of the other comments that I've heard about, you know, no regulation, you shouldn't be able to regulate anything. I mean, it, it really, you know, I think I supported you being put onto the board, um, but some of those comments kind of fly in the face of what we're trying to do with, uh, you know, reining in some of the things that we're seeing with some of these contractors. And that, it, and that does involve with the government, the county government, um, putting some rules on top of people and, and regulating some things. So um, there's that dichotomy. So uh, I didn't bring this item today and um, we'll see what happens with the discussion, whichever way it goes. I think it's always perfect to tell someone face to face what you think, and that's what I think. I have nothing against you personally. Disagree with the uh, some of the things that you've said about no regulation uh, being lawful and under the Constitution. Also disagree with the recusals that you made because again, I don't think they were appropriate. You didn't have something enduring to your private personal gain. You didn't have a conflict of interest that was really um, legitimate. I just think it was an easy way to get out of a tough vote. That's my opinion. Stephen, you're recognized in Lumen. <laughs> Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't necessarily have any comments, but. Robert. No. Um, uh, Wes, on the, I, I think part of also what we need to do is, uh, I think somehow we got off cycle. So we have nine members that serve three year terms and somehow no one board member rolls off next year. They're all, you had, I guess, four elected in one year and five elected in another year. So it, it seems like we need to try to figure out how, maybe how to balance that to where you can um, maybe do three a year or something like that would, would seem sure. lo logical instead of the four and the five with, with no year. Um, and so, I, you know, again, on, on this item, um, you know, it, it's difficult because these are the majority of cases that will be coming in front of the board for quite some time. Um, so, and then also, Wes, uh, I think we were going to set up a number uh, that people could call. Is that? I believe it's completed, Commissioner. We just got to put the press release All on. All right, so we'll do that today then? Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Commissioner 
as I'm nearing the end of my uh, eight years here, it's noteworthy to me that all, almost every single one of my appointees that sits on boards um, like planning and um, SRI are the exact people that were put there at the very beginning. Um, so for eight years, these folks have represented District 2 on these different boards, and I can't think of a single one of them in which there wasn't at least one vote or decision that they made that I disagreed with. And for the most part, I've never contacted them to tell them that I disagreed with it because I didn't put them on those boards to do it the way I would do it. I put them on those boards because I felt like they were good representatives of the people of Escambia County. Um, you know, we all know that, uh, <laughs> um, you know, certainly Larry is, uh, is, is libertarian bordering on anarchist um, in his politics. He's not very uh, shy about sharing that. Um, you know, certainly has, has attacked me quite a bit over the years, and I've probably given him just about as much back to him. Um, the idea that we would remove somebody uh, from representing on a board because of statements that they made that were in keeping with their political feelings um, strikes me as a completely inappropriate action. The uh, maybe other reasons to remove them; those are every, each of the five of us will make those votes. But um, those boards, uh, there, there are there are people on those boards that are far more left leaning than I am, and I would certainly never think to remove one of them because of their left leaning tendencies. Um, so where you fall on the spectrum from, you know, from, from communist to libertarian, um, you are, a, if you are a Scambia County citizen uh, capable of following the law and the rules and the purpose of those boards, then, then you should be you know, considered for service on those. So um, my vote certainly wouldn't have anything to do with Larry's uh, uh, political posturing and, or even his activities here in front of this board. Those are constitutionally protected rights. Um, I have seen Larry recuse himself from things based on the uh, appearance of impropriety, and that is always an ex a, a excuse, it's always a, a reason, it's always a valid purpose for the recusal process, um, because the appearance of impropriety erodes the foundations of trust that make our government work. Um, so as I look at each of those recusals, I see no reason that any of those, while I might not have recused myself in the same way, um, if Larry perceived those to be a perception of impropriety, um, then his recusal actually protected our government institutions from, uh, from accusation or, or the appearance of impropriety. So that strikes me as being appropriate. Um, you know, certainly don't agree with them. Certainly don't agree. I mean, Tim Pyle is, is a little too heavy, uh, uh, you know, fond of the developers and developer interests for my tastes. Um, but I would never question Tim Pyle's uh, 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 suitability to serve on the... Uh, planning board, and I hope Tim doesn't get offended that I used him as an example. Um, but uh, uh, for that reason, I just don't, it, <laughs> we've got a problem um, with how we've done that board. I disagree with what Larry said publicly, that we didn't need to change anything. We need to change something, but what we need to change is the direction from this board for what right looks like in Escambia County. We need a much more aggressive attitude toward uh, uh, nefarious behavior, um, and we need to be you know, we could actually follow Santa Rosa's model, which is uh, which works a little bit better, in my opinion, um, and and move toward resolution. Gentlemen, we do this with regard to um, uh, planning. And, I'm sorry, with regard to code enforcement, we've got so many code enforcement, uh, 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 you know, frequent flyers out there that we just don't push aggressively from this board by pushing our staff to go ahead and get it in front of the magistrate, get it settled, and get that property brought into, either brought into um, compliance or um, you know, get that property, sell it, and pay off the fees. That's on us to drive the staff's direction. It is not on the volunteers, the same similar situation to this, it's not on the volunteers who sit on that board nearly to the extent that it is on us to make sure that we are giving good command guidance, that this is what the board expects um, that if you're a bad actor developer in, uh, in Escambia County, Florida, we will find a way to quickly show you the door. If we could give that guidance from this board, then the board that Larry sits on would be uh, uh, empowered to be able to prevent things like what we're seeing now. So with that, I will also say this, Larry, since we're talking about you, we have the normal rule of how many eight minutes are given. Um, it is not lost on me that uh, the, you know, one of the things that has changed me 
uh, by sitting on this board was the issue that we had with Eager Beaver. When I was the chairman, did not allow Eager Beaver, uh, who was the applicant, to speak any more than I did anybody else. And in doing so, I violated their rights. This isn't quite the same, but that affected me and who I am. So Larry, if you have anything else that you want to say specifically to me before I cast this vote, I need to hear what, you, what your thoughts are. If I may, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, yeah please. Yeah, I've, I've stated a lot of things in, uh, you know, in public. That's my public opinion. I have made motions to revoke, permanently revoke, uh, permitting privileges from state contractors in our county. I even had to argue with the other board members as to why. And he did an elderly couple wrong. He showed up once, and then he didn't show up at the other two hearings. And they said, permanently? I said, yeah, permanently. And I did get a second on it, so it went to discussion. And, that, and I said, and they said, that's a little bit harsh. You know, permanently, first time? I said, well, the way I see it is, he's not here. He's not here. He done these, he done these uh, you know, the, these homeowners wrong. And he's not here to defend himself. So one of two reasons, he don't care or he's dead. Either way, problem solved. Because that carried on for about three, four months. Certified letters, all that type of stuff. So whenever I do, you know, I'm not completely uh, un unregulated. I just think that the government goes too far. And if you don't have somebody on these boards to just at least get a thought process going as, as to, well, you know, because what, what can happen is y'all can put a whole bunch of board members on there who follow y'all's ideology or, or what you want to get reelected instead of the citizens actually representing the citizens. Every, every one of those board members have a different perspective. That's a good thing. You don't want everyone hammer. You think you think you have we have problems with uh, with not enough contractors. We don't. And you think we won't have more problems in the future if if you put every board member up there that hammers right off the rip. Don't even you know just hang them first. Ask questions later. Customers, homeowners, business owners. This will create more problems if you don't at least have one person out of a nine member board just to bring up the obvious because you know homeowners know that if they make if they it, it, hey i don't want to pay the rest of this i don't you know we're i'm going to pay you this and that's it or i'm going to file a complaint on you then the next thing you know the county commissioner is going to put you on a on a list of complaints so uh, you know, th that's, that can create more problems, less contractors. I know a lot of them my age trying to get out of it from the LTMs, which is the low testosterone males who can't perform, causing problems, you know, not showing up for work, tummy hurts, all that stuff. The COVID overreach created a bunch of problems. All those kind of things are going to add more and you're trying to solve problems, but by taking one board member off of, off of that board, who happens to be able to ask questions that nobody else would. There's no way that I can, I, I'm not, it's not a single vote. If you got far left, you need far right. So that somewhere in the middle, that board can make a decision, not on what you would decide, but on what citizens would decide. But I get it. Larry, let I, me ask you a question since Doug brought ahead. you up. Um, in one of the videos that I watched, you said, and I'm going to quote it, paraphrase it, you said, I can't vote on this because I can't be objective because this is my friend. Those were your words. And that was on a very important case. I believe it was Matt Banks. Yes. So I just want to make sure you've got to make those votes unless you have some financial interest. I mean, I don't understand to this day. I'll never understand why you why you why you didn't make that vote. But I don't think I don't. I mean, I hear what Doug says. I disagree. Um, you know, because that that's too broad and that's too easy. We deal with issues a hundred every week, and there are a lot of people I know that I make these votes on. When we when we denied his legal bill, that was a lawyer that I play tennis with every week. I mean, you got to make tough votes up here, and you got to make tough votes on these boards. So let me ask you this: If Banks comes before you again, are you going to recuse? Are you going to recuse, or are you going to make a vote? 
I have no choice but to recuse. I, I cannot change direction once, I'm, I'm a referee okay. also. When you do this, mm -hmm. fight's over. over. You, you, can't, you can't be switching, and I'm not gonna switch because you're telling me to. That's no, what I'm well, saying. I have to vote on what I believe. Right. And I believe that him doing cabinet work for me, doing sheetrock for work for me, me doing plumbing work for him back in 2015 and 16 and 17, mm -hmm. Me, me, uh, supporting some, uh, you know, some, uh, 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 some, some, you know, sports activities for little children mm -hmm. that he happened to have something to do with. I think all of those things, all these citizens would say, "Why didn't you recuse yourself?" It depends you, on you, how you, you voted, you're too, man. You're too tight with him, depends and I'm not tight with him. Well, it depends on how you would have voted. You know a lot of contractors in this town, and you've done a lot of work in this I, town. I how have do no problem with people that I, that, like I said, I don't work for a lot of contractors. I don't work for a lot of contractors. Understood, but you obviously, I mean, you, you obviously have friends in the business. Nah, in, no, in the no, no, this, this is a, this is an entirely different thing. I guess the question is if, if, if the next contractor that comes up or the next time we got to make a tough vote and it's someone, you know, I mean, is this going to happen again? I mean, because. Well, well, you know, the only time that I would do something like this is if I feel like that there could be a, a, a perception of impropriety. That's the only reason I would do that. I don't want anybody to, to, to feel, well, Larry, you know, he should have recused himself because he, he's friends or, or done work for him, whatever. Now, now I don't, I won't say that just because I never ate dinner with this guy, I never ate lunch with him. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, I don't want there to be an impropriety. There's nine, nine board members. Right. That's the reason why you have nine. Because you, you, you want to have you, you want to have diversity up there. You want to have a little bit of a, you know different ideologies up there. Mm -hmm. Because just like what we're about to do in the next two weeks, uh, start regulating rentals. You know, y'all gonna do a board for that? You're gonna, you, you know, I mean, it's just if you can't have somebody that says, hey, you know, is this is this is this right? Now I got no problems with with somebody who does wrong. Somebody who does wrong, I've never had a complaint on my license because I'm going to make it. I'm going to I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do. I'm not a I'm not a low testosterone male. I'm a high testosterone man. I'm going to I'm going to be a man of my word. If you don't want people like that on the board, that's that's y'all's perspective. But I'm telling you, I feel like from the bottom of my heart that I am representing all citizens, whether they're homeowners, business owners, or contract owners, or, or contractors, they're citizens. And I'm going to do my best to, to, to do a fair shake and to bring up in the discussions different perspectives. And if that's not acceptable, I get it. Okay, good. Uh, uh, Stephen, Robert, then Doug. I don't have any questions for Larry. I mean, if anybody has one, no, yeah, I don't have a question for Larry either, but I do. don't we have a then we have a resignation on the contract to compensate board that we're getting ready to make another appointment at the next I meeting. I think we have seven. We have seven applicants, and I think we did have one resignation. Is that correct, Wes? Yeah. So we have a resignation. One resignation, seven new applicants. So we're actually nine. We're going to be placing two new members, correct? I, Shortly. I'm I, I don't know. Wes? I, I don't know who. Uh, you know, we'll see what comes to us to, for our vote. It'll be our vote. That's the other thing too. Doug. Doug had mentioned that you know. Um, the way he treats his, his appointees. Obviously, you're an appointee of the entire board. Mm -hmm. I don't believe you're an appointee of any one of us. And of course, I, I would venture to guess that most of, most of us operate that same way. We each have our individual selectee that sits on the island authority and the planning board. And, and of course, just as Doug mentioned, uh, I, I'm very hands off with those guys that let them do their thing. But but when you, you represent the entire board up here, so I, I might agree. I don't. I represent the citizens. Well, I'm I sorry. I understand, but you're an appointee of this board. That's true. But, so I, but I don't go up there to represent y'all. You can parse words if you want, but that's the way it is. I mean, you're, you're an appointee of this board, so you yes. represent the citizens, but you're an appointee of the board. Right. So um, there's a little nuance, nuanced distinction to what you were saying, Doug. But because it's the five of us that are represented by what you do, I mean, I think it's, it's fair for us to have this conversation. Doug, yeah, well, right? I mean, the truth is, Jeff, I mean, if you can't vote, you're ineffective as a board member. I mean, the point of being on the board is to be able to vote and make a decision. But I, you know, nevertheless, um, didn't y'all We have vote? a, excuse, I'm not, we are going to, um, as of now, there's one vacancy on the competency board. For a layperson, yes. For a layperson, correct. For a layperson. 
All right, that's a point of clarification I wanted. So we do have one position. That's good for me. All right, Doug, you reckon? So listening to the body of, um, of interactions over an extended period of time, uh, both professional and private, that you had with banks, the only choice that would have made sense is to recuse yourself. Um, had you not recused yourself, I would think you would be, I would be having a really significant problem with, with you voting given the fact that you had interacted not only professionally but also if i'm not mistaken it was there was actually an exchange of money in support of a child of yes. the thing that he was doing all of that i mean that's a clear cut example of when you should recuse yourself um, it is interesting to me that we are focused on the one guy who recused himself from the vote and not on the eight votes that were that that did not hold banks accountable um, to you know, at the time that they had the opportunity to. And I want to make it very clear that when we recuse ourselves, it actually does not matter at all. It couldn't matter less which way you would have voted or which way you did vote if you chose not to recuse yourself. That's actually completely the opposite of why we recuse ourselves. Um, so for you to say, I could not uh, be objective, that's why the recusal process exists, and that is why we have boards that have multiple people on them. Um, it only takes a majority of that board to be able to take action. The majority of the board chose to take a different action, which I think we all now, uh, which I think everybody would like to have a mulligan on it, right? Um, but again, we as a Board of County Commissioners and as a legal department and as a staff are not driving a system of expectations and a system of consequences for bad actions that enable boards like the one on which you sit to truly protect the citizens. We should be looking a lot closer inside to ourselves instead of, you know, it, it's always easy to, uh, you know, to, to make a couple of changes, you know, shuffle the org chart and that kind of thing. This is a cultural issue. It's a failure of this board, this legal department, this staff to properly drive what is an acceptable standard in Escambia County and apply that standard equally to everybody in every situ situation. So um, <clears throat> I, I, I believe the information that you gave me from the podium here has been is, is very important to me. Um, and I believe that we've given you the opportunity to to uh, uh, tell your story, uh, your side of it, which I think was critical to this uh, this procedure. So thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. Mr. Chairman, uh, point of clarification, it's not a failure of a board. The board can only act on things that they are aware of. So quite frankly, it was not a failure of this board because they, they were not aware. And when the situation was brought uh, to my attention personally, well, we got very aggressive uh, in trying to bring resolution. And it is, you're right, it is a failure of a system uh, when people who put their life savings to get hoodwinked and taken advantage of. And it's quite frankly sickening to me. Yep, absolutely. It is. It is sickening, uh, no doubt. Right, but the Larry, ordinances. Larry, I think unless Doug, okay. do you want him up there? Uh, I've got a, I got a quick question. Oh, you got, okay, yeah. go, go. All right, Larry, are you recusing yourself on the Jesse, the cost? I did. I found out that they were in business together and they were brother-in-laws. I did not know that, and I just felt like, actually, the uh, county attorney, <clears throat> uh, or the attorney for that particular board at that meeting. Uh, he said, uh, Mr. Downs is recusing himself from Matt Banks and Jesse Lacoste. And it just struck something on, you know, I just found out uh, maybe a, three or four weeks before that that they were related, brother-in-laws, and in business before. I just felt like it was appropriate. Uh, I don't think it would have changed the outcome one bit, but whether or not it did, uh, you know, Personally, anybody who's come before that board that did anything like this, which as uh, far as I can remember, there was one, I took harsher actions than the board members you have now. So that's, that's just an excuse. And the ordinances, the ordinances are there. The, 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 the protocol, the due process is, has been implemented by y'all. The board has to follow it. Even the county attorney or the, the attorney that's assigned to that board now just said, at the last meeting and the meeting before, there's nothing more y'all can do. And whenever I said that to Channel 3, nothing needs to be changed with the board. The board doesn't, the CCB board does not change ordinances. It doesn't do anything. Whatever, I mean, it doesn't do anything as far as the due process goes. That's y'all. That's y'all. That's the state. So the process that was followed 
which I recuse myself of on that one, that, on, on those two, it had to be followed. She said it. So I, I, I mean, just I, think I this is if, a, if them being brothers. I mean, I know for us, if, if that would be one, but you know, I, I, Larry, I'd say for me though, to, I mean, to say that you can't be objective, um, uh, it sounds like you're trying to get out of jury duty. Um, I've never tried to get out of jury I, duty. I haven't either. Um, I try to get on. And, and that's the thing is that, is that, but we need somebody who can be objective and, and, uh, I mean, everything else that's been said, I mean, it's, it's not, it has nothing to do with anything else. Is that we need someone who's objective not, who can hear these cases. I'm not taking this personal. I, I mean, I'm not. I'm just, I'm just telling y'all, y'all are, are going to take a, yeah, from pressure from a, a fringe minority, a very small minority, because y'all know I could get thousands of signatures real quick. Thousands. It's, it's I could get that, three thousand. I mean, so I'm saying, right? But we need someone who can who can be objective and who can. Uh, I, I be can an be objective, member. and when there, and, and if there's a uh, if there's a perception of impropriety, which I'm telling you, there's some but, board members. But I, I guess my thing is, is I mean, three hundred fifty thousand people here. I mean, it's they're they're people that we know that come in front of here all the time that are on both sides of an issue. We got to be objective. Except for when you are voting on each other's stuff, right? But, but Chairman, this filibuster is ridiculous. I mean, I, I, I actually call the question. I mean, we're, I'm not going to sit here and swap spit all day. I mean, sure. We're talking about this 30 minutes. I mean, this is unprecedented. Call the question. Take a vote. People vote where they want to vote. I, I was prepared to do so, Lumen. I was making sure all yeah, my counterparts I mean, I was, said. I, mean, I, don't, I don't. I've been here 30 minutes. I'm yeah, I don't have any complaint. Robert, are you done with Mr. Downs? I don't have any questions for Larry. Larry, you're good. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Thank you very much. Chair would entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to remove Larry Downs Jr. from the board. And the, the motion and the vote has nothing to do with his his activities, his comments at our board meetings. Those haven't changed. Um, when he was voted on the board, that was after years of attendance and comments. And I think everybody voted for him to be put on the board. Um, you know, it has nothing to do with anything he says here. You, uh, I mean, you know, if I, if I didn't take action and vote on on items before me with people that I've known for, you know, 30 and 40 years, uh, I, I wouldn't be able to be effective at all. And uh, it's, it's a part of, you know, if you want to be in leadership, I mean, sometimes you have to recognize that, you know, even people that you're friends with may have done something they shouldn't have done. And uh, if you can't be objective and do that, then you don't serve the purpose that you're intended to serve. It has nothing to do with his political stance or his comments at our board meetings or public forum or video in the meetings or you know that's again he was voted on the board I, I believe unanimously unanimously after after that behavior had been for a number of years so that that is irrelevant and to paint it any other way is you know is is just deflecting what the issue is the issue is and you know the law disagrees with commissioner underhill's assessment of what you sure what abstaining of course is what the reasons that you can abstain for um it's not an interpretation. There, there are very defined guidelines for what you can abstain for, and uh, and so that's again wasn't for feedback from uh, from the member, but that's my motion. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second on the floor. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes 4-1 with Doug uh, voting to keep Larry on the board. So uh, Mr. Downs is removed from the board. All right. County Attorney's Report, you're recognized. Thank you, sir. There are four action items on today's County Attorney's Report. I can answer any questions on those items. Move the County Attorney's Report. Second. Motion and second to move the entire County Attorney's Report. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Finally, we have the add-on. Uh, Commissioner Barry, you had an added. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I moved, uh, it's a discretionary uh, expenditure uh, for Molino Park Elementary PTA for $500 from District 5 discretionary. Second. second. Thank you. Motion second. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Uh, Any opposed? Mr. Chairman. Unanimously. Yes, sir. Um, are we finished? Before we go, uh, I, I certainly want to recognize, we know that from my position, I, I've been very passionate about workforce housing, homelessness, workforce training, and unfortunately, it has not really moved as quickly as I wanted it to move. And um, I'm glad to see that we're going to have some help. And Claire has now a deputy director, uh, Ms. Danielle Womack, who has expertise in workforce training and housing. So she's here today. So we're expecting great things and hopefully movement to start happening uh, in our neighborhood and human services. So she is here. Uh, so Danielle, welcome aboard. Fantastic. Welcome aboard. 
All right, anything else? Uh, from Mr. The Chairman, I say yes. one, one last yes, thing. We are having issues with a chiller. And so we are running at about 40% capacity. I know it's hot outside, so there may be some uncomfortable temperatures. In this in, building? In this building, in the judicial across the street. And uh, so we are working to, to flow the water as best we can to try to keep, this, keep it bearable and comfortable. Uh, we don't have a time frame yet. We're still working on the time frame and the cost. So I just wanted to make everybody aware if, if your office gets a little warm, that's probably why. Thank you. We're adjourned.